you know what happens at 10 a.m. each and every weekday. It's time to brief you on what's happening around you. Welcome to the program. This is the Daily Brief with me, Samuel Njoroge, and our sign language interpreter for the next one hour of this live show will be Clement Muli. Now, today is Thursday, and so many stories are expected to be developing closer to you. In fact, this morning, we've got detectives from the Office of the Directorate of Criminal Investigations still camping outside the Runda residence of Keroche Brewery's CEO, that is Tabitha Karanja, as well as the Naivasha offices. And we've got our team on the ground, and in the course of this show, we'll be briefing us on exactly what will be happening in as far as this story is concerned. The Water Principal Secretary is also also headed to Gatanga to commission various water projects in this particular area, not to mention the judges' colloquium is still ongoing in Mombasa County. And also this day, we expect the family of the late first president of the Republic of Kenya, that is the late Mze Jomo Kenyatta, to be leading the nation in commemorating the 41st anniversary since his death. You are right in time for the show that will be briefing you on this and much more. And kicking us off is Fred Kai from Mombasa County, who will be telling us of a protest or demonstration that is currently ongoing in Mombasa. We've got women. Some. Naam Sam kama ulivyosema hapo awali ni kwamba uh, mwendo si muda si muda si mrefu sana tuleza kuna kwamba wamama waleza kufika hapa kuweza ku, 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 kuweza kuna kama iwapo basi wataweza ku kuonana na Chief Justice David Maraga manake wameza kufika hapa waki, wakiwa na lalama kwamba watoto wao ama uh, vizazi vyao basi vinaweza kuharibika na ku, uh, na shida kubwa ya madawa ya kulevya na ndipo basi wameza kufika katika hoteli hii ya Western ili kuweza kuona iwapo basi wataweza kuonana na David Maraga ambao ndio Chief Justice wa nchi yetu wa Kenya na matatizo yao mengi walikuwa nasema kwamba uh, washukiwa wa, wa, wa ulanguzi wa dawa za kulevya basi wanapofikishwa mahakamani huweza kuachiliwa pasipo kuchukuliwa zile uh, zile sheria muhimu ama zile sheria ambazo zinaweza kuwafanya kuwafanya washukiwa hawa basi kuweza uh, kutokuwa karibu na, na jamii na wakazi wa, wa hawa basi wameweza kufika hapa wa mama kwa, kwa baadhi ya wazee wakilalama basi kwamba kwa nini uh, majaji wanaweza kuruhusu uh, walanguzi hawa ama washukiwa walanguzi dawa za kulevya kuweza kuachiliwa huru pasipo uh, kupata kupata haki na moja kwa moja basi tuweze kujiunga tu na baadhi ya ya ya, ya wakazi ambao walikuwa wameweza kufika hapa tuanze tu na majina yako ni nani na tuambie tu ni kipi hasa kilichowafanya mkuje hapa leo uh, mimi naitwa Joseph Faraga kile kimefanya hichi kikundi kije hapa ni kwa sababu tumejua kwamba majaji wako hapa na hao majaji akina mama wana kilio kingi sana kwa sababu watoto wao wamepotea hawajiwezi nyumbani kila mama akiweka akiweka kitu chake china ichukuliwa na mtoto anaenda kuuza ili apate madawa hata kuiba wanaiba sasa eh, ja, kesi zikifika kotini tunakuta ya kwamba kesi zinaendelea zinaendelea lakini washtakiwa huwa wanaachiliwa baadaye kwa mfano kesi ambayo ya vijana ambao walioshikwa wakapelekwa kwa Amerika ilimaliza hapa miaka nenda miaka nenda kabla hajatatuliwa hivi imeenda Amerika muda si muda wamefungwa miaka ishirini na mitano je kwa nini hapa wasifungwe wale watu ambao na si hao tu tunasikia kuna wengine ambao wako hapa wanatakana huku mbona majaji wa, kesi za hao watu wakifika kotini mbona wasifungwe na inahitaji kwanza wafungwe maisha kwa sababu vizazi ambao tunategemea uh, mwaka kesho as leaders ni hao vijana na kama washatumia washa madawa kulevya hatuna kizazi mwaka ujao hatuna kizazi miaka ijao hatutakuwa na Kenya kwa hivyo tunataka Kenya eh, eh, serikali ya Uhuru Kenyatta isike mwa, do, doria vizuri majaji kama ambao ni eh, walagai wa, wa, wa washtakiwe na, na kwa nini mmeweza kuna kwamba kuja kutatiza shughuli katika hoteli hii badala pengine mngesubiri kuweza kufika mahali kwingine ilikuwa si tatizo kwa sababu hapa ndiyo tumejua kwamba ujumbe utafika kwa sababu hawa ambao wanahusika kwa makoti 
hawa ambao ambao ni majaji wako hapa tulikuwa nataka huo ujumbe pia ufike kwao Ah shukrani sana kwa mdao. Na msaum tumeweza kuona kwamba uh, uh, wakazi hawa basi wameweza kutolewa katika eneo hili na, na askari uh, kwa sababu wameweza kuona kwamba uh, wakazi hawa walikuwa wanaweza kuleta vurugu lakini uh, hawasisho lao wanaweza kusema kwamba ujumbe wao mkubwa umeweza kuwafikia wahusika kwa sababu wameweza kufika hapa na waka, wakalalamikia uh, yale matakwa mat, yao ambao Uh, yanaweza kuwakera katika uh, eneo hili la pwani hususan uh, madawa ya kulevya. Kwa hivyo uh, wanasema kwamba ujumbe wao umeweza kumfikia jaji mkuu iwapo hakuweza kutoka katika uh, kuweza kuonana na, na, na wakazi hawa lakini wanasema kwamba ujumbe umeweza kumfikia jaji mkuu. Na hapa tulipo basi tunaweza kuona kwamba askari wameweza kufika na wanaweza kushika doria. Wameweza tayari kuwafurusha uh, wakazi hawa na kwa sasa basi hali imerudi kuwa shwari tunaweza kukaa hapa tuone iwapo basi uh, jaji mkuu ataweza uh, kuyaongelea haya ambao amejiri uh, asubuhi ya leo ama ataweza tu kuyapatia uh, sikio la kufa lakini kutoka hapa tutaweza kukita kambi tuokoletee tu yale atajiri hapo baadaye kutoka hapa na kuregesha kwa studio sam Thank you so much Fred Kai for that update from Mombasa County where women are leading the Mombasa residents to the White Sands Hotel where the judges colloquium is currently ongoing it has been there for this one week and of course the grievances are all too familiar with the residents of that particular region the participation and in the participation and input of the judiciary when it comes to ending the menace of drug addiction in that particular region. Now I need you to go to the courts, or we need to take you now to the courts, where Cyrus Jirongo, politician and businessman, is currently in court. Let's cross over there and listen in to what's happening. That an accused person had been marooned down here by police officers disregarding the fact that these are court premises and the accused person should not i had to plead with police officers to go and arrest the accused person from outside mr maxwell otien yes, let's not behave like that the courts do not stop you from arresting an accused person the courts only request that court grounds are sacrosanct it is within the court grounds that people are free live alone even your home the court grounds are sacrosanct and you do not defile them by arresting people within the court grounds you can be sure i cannot stop you from arresting an accused person outside outside the court premises but within the court compound respect the independence of the judiciary that it has its sacrosanct grounds within which it operates okay so let's not have that standoff as it was uh, last time. But the accused person should appear before the DCI for his processing. Uh, what time? You, you know, immediately we finish from here. Yes. I do make a check the accused person myself. Okay. Is here. Okay. Uh, I know that we examine to allow us possible discussion.
So the accused person to present himself to the DCI headquarters for processing within six hours of his release from custody, and this is regardless of whether it will be night or day. The, uh, the order to present there within six hours uh, still holds whether it is night or day. Next file. Yeah, no. Yes. Still on the same file. I want to put to the in compliance with the, the passport order. The accused will be traveling on Sunday, the 25th of uh, August, to Saturday, the 31st of August, to Southern Sudan. From. From the 25th of Sunday, this Sunday, he'll be traveling to Southern Sudan. Oh, that one, I don't think he'll be allowed. Is the Minister for Interior going to allow him? You know we are undertaking a census, Mr. Omar, yes, and he has to be counted. He doesn't want to be counted in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> you will deal with the Minister. Okay. Now, we are only asking the court to allow him. Yes. That now he's a uh, subject of this court that he be allowed to travel. From 25th to? From 25th to the 31st of uh, August. And in light of that, we are requesting that we be allowed to deposit the passport in court on the 2nd of September. Now the logic is that you will be deposed the passport today and be forced again tomorrow to be before him to make a similar application for the passport to be released for him to travel. It is reasonable that he be allowed as he lives here to go back to the to get the visas from the Southern Embassy, Southern Sudan Embassy for his travel back to Help the state to not have an addition to that prisoner Former Lugari lawmaker Cyrus Jirongo had been ordered to appear in court today, Thursday, to, uh, to answer to fraud cases where he is accused of having forged documents to secure an overdraft of 50 million uh, Kenya shillings. And that case is currently ongoing in court. And we shall link up with our team on the ground in the course of the daily brief for more detail on that uh, particular story. Now, also happening uh, today, is that uh, Wahun Goge, our correspondent from Nyeri County, joins us right about now with an update from that region. Wahu, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Kindly bring us up to speed with what's latest from Nyeri County. Well, thank you very much, Sam, and uh, good morning. Uh, today we are looking into land dispute and succession and yesterday Sam just to let you know what happened a guy was uh, killed in Gangarithi area because of uh, the issue of land and actually when I was listening to whatever they had to say they were saying that uh, they were fighting over a, a piece of land that was left but then again uh, Wakili was telling me that uh, it was a uh, it was not succession it was uh, another it was a totally different case but it was still on the issue of land so I'm joined by Wakili Wahomegi Konyo uh, and who will be explaining to us uh, now that Wakili, you know some in Yeri County have never had uh, an issue of people um, killing each other because of land. This one is the first case and uh, which is uh, has made us do this today. Maybe Wakili, what does it take to for a court to go into and get into a case of a uh, land dispute? Like yesterday a man was killed and as you were telling me that uh, the court has to come in uh, starting from the chief maybe of the area now getting to the court. Maybe you can explain to some and our viewers yes. there. Now, firstly, uh, a chief uh, has nothing to do with a land dispute, eh? mm -hmm. or even a succession matter. Mm -hmm. uh, the, sh the law of a chief is simply to issue an introductory letter mm -hmm. to the court, mm -hmm. telling the court, yes, the deceased came from my area, mm -hmm. it's known to me, mm -hmm. and he left the following, uh, the, the, the following uh, the fa this family, mm -hmm. 
these are his children, this is the, the widow, mm -hmm. and he left this person of land. Mm -hmm. The rest is for the court mm -hmm. to hear and determine the matter. Mm -hmm. And under Section 71 of the Law of Succession Act, the court is enjoined to ascertain the beneficiaries entitled mm -hmm. and their respective entities mm -hmm. to the estate, who they are entitled in the estate, mm -hmm. before concluding the matter. The issue in Gangalidi mm -hmm. was not a successional matter. Mm -hmm. This is a dispute that started way back in the 1960s, mm -hmm. where one person was purchasing a parcel of land, mm -hmm. but the deal went sour. Mm -hmm. It was not concluded. And both parties, that is the purchaser and the seller, died. Mm -hmm. Now the people fighting over the property mm -hmm. are actually now the, the, their children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that somebody lost his life. Mm -hmm. This is a matter that has been in the courts mm -hmm. from the 60s, mm -hmm. the 70s, mm -hmm. the 1980s, mm -hmm. the 1990s, mm -hmm. the, the year 2000, yeah. and now we are in the year 2019. Mm -hmm. And the courts have been, uh, been unable to determine that matter. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. one party has been claiming land by way of adverse possession. Mm -hmm. Justice Anthony Omboyo mm -hmm. decided that that matter is the judicata. Mm -hmm. The other one was saying, you people, you are now first of land, you are supposed to be evicted. Mm -hmm. Justice Anthony Omboyo again said that matter is the judicata. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was very interesting. As far as I'm concerned, I actually said that is like a, a football match which goes into a draw. Mm -hmm. None has called against the other. Mm -hmm. But it is a very sad state of affairs mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the, co the courts ought to have decided mm -hmm. whether, mm -hmm. indeed, the whether the family that is claiming adverse possession, mm -hmm. whether they are entitled to that land mm -hmm. by adverse possession, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the other side which is claiming these people are trespassers, mm -hmm. they are entitled mm -hmm. to an order of eviction. Mm -hmm. If the courts had decided that, that, the matter that way, mm -hmm. We would not have found ourselves in the situation that we found our, uh, with ourselves yesterday, yeah. where mm -hmm. a gang mm -hmm. came sure. to attempt to evict the family mm -hmm. because the courts have not decided. Mm -hmm. When the courts fail, mm -hmm. people are tempted to take the law into their hands, mm -hmm. and we end up in a jungle. Mm -hmm. Now we that uh, the state of affairs, it's okay. yes. Now that the gangs were used yesterday, now yes. this case has turned into something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the court and the government should come in mm -hmm. and find a solution. Mm -hmm. And the best way to go about this matter mm -hmm. is alternative dispute <coughs> resolution mm -hmm. by way of having mediation. Mm -hmm. the, the court and the chief justice have introduced court and next mediation. Mm -hmm. That matter now should be reopened mm -hmm. and they go to mediation. Mm -hmm. They seek uh, the best way to go about it mm -hmm. And by having sit down with a mediator, mm -hmm. agree on the way forward, mm -hmm. they greet each other and they go away happy. Thank you. I can let you go to Karatina. <laughs> well, uh, that was Wahomegi Konyo, and actually he's rushing to Karatina, and that's why we had to do this very fast. And some you've heard him say, actually, I've learned a, a new word, but actually, I can't say it. Anyway, Sam, back to you in studio for now. I'll catch up with you later. Wahoo, thank you so much and uh, congratulations on learning a new word uh, from Nyeri County. We need to move on with other events that are unfolding as of now where the President of the Republic of Kenya, that is Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, is this day expected uh, to lead uh, the nation in commemorating the anniversary of uh, uh, death of the founding president of this nation, that is the late Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. And we've got our reporter Daniel Karioki who is following up on this story and now joins us live with an update on exactly what we can expect from his end. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Kindly bring us up to speed with what we can expect from your end. 
Right, uh, you said it right, uh, Sam. Anytime from now, uh, the president is going to be making his way into the Holy Family Basilica uh, for the service, the memorial service. This is the 41st uh, memorial service uh, since uh, the founding father uh, passed on. And of course, it will be the seventh uh, memorial service that uh, uh, the son, uh, uh, President Uru Kenyatta is going to be leading the country uh, since he uh, was elected uh, as the President of the Republic of Kenya. Well, uh, of course, we are waiting to see what will transpire here at the Holy Family Basilica, the speeches that will be made, and uh, other guests that are going to be making their way into this uh, uh, for the, this service uh, today. Remember, last year, uh, during the uh, for the decade since uh, uh, the passing of the founding father, uh, we saw the um, uh, former prime minister, or rather the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, uh, was part of the guests who are here. And remember, that was when uh, the two leaders had... Uh, uh, held talks in uh, the office of the president, that's the Harambe House, and uh, had a handshake. And so uh, they, uh, the, that day the president invited uh, the uh, ODM leader to speak to the congregation and of course they called each other brother, uh, my big brother, and uh, uh, well, today we are going to be looking forward to see what uh, maybe will change and maybe the speeches that are going to be made uh, so that uh, uh, as, uh, as um, I had told you earlier on, uh, the president is uh, actually going to be having the seventh. Maybe he's going to just tell some of the things that uh, uh, he has managed to, uh, uh, to achieve as a president, bearing in mind that uh, uh, the Building Bridges Initiative has been going around collecting uh, views on how they would want the country to be, and that is what uh, that was part of what formed the speech uh, last year, as the two leaders uh, maintained that they want uh, this country to be united the way the founding father and those who uh, fought for the independence of this country wanted it to be. So today we'll see uh, so far have they managed to bring Kenya uh, together? And if they have, how far have they managed to bring it, uh, the Kenyans, the unity of the country? So we'll keep our viewers updated and, of course, in all our subsequent bulletins, in case of any political stories or in case of anything that is going to be happening here at the Holy Family Basilica. For now, we understand that the president is uh, at the uh, Muslim, at the um, Parliament buildings where the founding father was uh, buried and uh, is laying flowers there. So we are, of course, going to be waiting to uh, see uh, what is going to be going on as we go on. Now, take you back to Sam in studio. Right. Thank you so much, Dan Karaoke. And as you say, currently the first family uh, is at uh, the mausoleum where the founding president was laid to rest, where they're laying a wreath on uh, that particular. Yeah, that is what is happening from uh, right here in Nairobi. But we need to move on with other stories of the day. And I have uh, Jim India with me right here in studio and I would like him to weigh in on the issue of the census because as we will be informed in the course of the show, Kilifi Youth Strike of a Census and Naivasha too, there is a similar story that is currently uh, developing. So first things first, Jim, welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have you on the Daily Brief this day. And... Uh, are you convinced that as a nation we are prepared to conduct and embrace the 2019 population and housing census? Um, thank you, Sam. Uh, I am definitely convinced that as a nation we are prepared. Uh, the, Ken the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics is definitely prepared. There are few issues around it which uh, is maybe as a result of mismanagement and poor timing and things like that. For instance, a lot of the youth who have been on strike, for instance, last week in Nairobi had youth in Kangabi on strike. After that, we have youths in different places being on strike, and it has been a result people saying, we want jobs, okay. we belong to, we are from Kangemi, we do not see the, the youth of Kangemi on this list. But others are like, I've seen a lot of posts and friends of mine telling me they have not been paid any money, they have not been, uh, they do not have the, the requisite uh, allowances that they were supposed to be paid. And so a lot of it has to do with the logistics of uh, the, the government just paying these people. But majority of it is I think we are ready to do, to conduct the census. We've been ready for the last 10 years. People will be counted. The shortcomings notwithstanding, 
and we will get the data that we definitely the controversy need. though with that comes with this kind of an exercise the, the side shows don't help. Mm -hmm. Definitely the side shows don't help. And it does not inspire confidence to a public that is already not confident uh, about this whole process. Because remember, the conversations that have been going on around has been, why exactly are we uh, being counted? Why are we taking part in a process that we do not see the results of? People are saying, you were counted in 2009. I cannot account for how that particular process helped me as an individual. Mm -hmm. If I could not go to the hospital then, I still cannot go to the hospital now. If I did not have a job then, some probably still do not have jobs now. So a lot, the, there's a lot of confidence issues around this whole process. And so the sideshows around it are not helping to inspire public confidence. Mm -hmm. And so that maybe is a PR issue that has to be dealt with. But to say that we will, this process will be conducted, that is for sure. And government has to do it and it will be done. Well, government <laughs> needs to do it, it will be done, but the quality of how it will be done will determine uh, the, next, uh, the next course of action. Remember the controversy that ensued uh, courtesy of the 2009 housing and population census. In fact, at some point, the, pre the then president, Mwai Kibaki, had to reorder the exercise to be conducted afresh in some places. So shall we see that happen this time around? Again, as Jim says, we need to have all manner of confidence to ensure and you know, be convinced that this is going to take up uh, rightfully. But for now, we need to take a break. When we return, we shall be briefing you on the stories that we've already ran by you as well as much more that will be happening from uh, across the 47 regions and beyond.